Hi, my name is Cole Verbal, and I am a second year medical student at Oklahoma State University College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, today I'm here to present my poster on the prevalence of disclosed and undisclosed co uh, financial conflicts of interest among systematic review authors regarding the management of proximal humerus fractures. Uh, in research, it is a must to make sure that systematic reviews are reliable and unbiased, especially when systematic reviews can lead to changes in treatment protocols. Thus, our aim was to characterize the influence of financial bias on results and conclusions and to characterize the non-disclosed the non and disclosed conflicts of interest in proximal humerus fracture authors. Um, for our methods, um, OVID, Medline, and OVID, Embase, uh, were searched for systematic reviews covering proximal humerus fracture treatments. Uh, we collected a list of study and author characteristics as well as screening each author for non-disclosed conflicts of interest using Open Payment Database, Dollars for Profs, and the United States Patent and Trademark Office. We evaluated risk of bias using the Cochrane Collaborations criteria. Uh, we found no relation between authorial conflict of interest and the results and conclusions of the systematic reviews. However, this finding is tempered by the small sample size of the included studies. Among the 17 included systematic reviews, seven had at least one non-disclosed conflict of interest. Of the seven uh, with a non-disclosed conflict of interest, two were found to have a high risk of bias. We were unable to assess for an association between industry funding and study outcomes and conclusions since no systematic reviews funded by industry were retrieved. Um, considering our small sample size, larger studies were warranted, uh, larger studies are warranted to discover the full scope of the effect of financial bias on, on results and conclusions of systematic reviews for proximal humerus fracture treatment.